In this video, I'm gonna show you how to pad your needlepoint. This is a really, really easy technique and it just gives your piece a lot of dimension. Um, and I use it a lot, so I thought I'd make a video and show you how I did it. So here on this side, I've just done a row with no padding, so you'll be able to see it, the difference once we're done. And then on this side over here, I'm actually padding with a pipe cleaner instead of thread. And I just tacked this pipe cleaner down with some invis invisible beading thread, but you could also use a strand of floss or anything you have handy. Now typically, I like to pad or do the underneath stitches, the first part of this, in a more inexpensive thread. Typically, I use floss or pearl cotton just because it's cheaper, but you could really pad with anything you want. You just want to match whichever color that you're going to stitch over it. So in this case, if I was doing this on my needlepoint piece and using this color, I would, you know, pad with like a gold or kind of marigold colored floss or pearl cotton. But just for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to use these colors just so you can see it against the white canvas and make it easy. So really with the padding stitch, the first thing you're going to do is, is fill in the padding. So you want to go the opposite direction that you're eventually going to stitch. So when you go over padding, almost always you use a satin stitch, which is diagonal. So you're gonna wanna do these long stitches vertically so that you're not going in the same holes as your diagonal threads once you go over them, just so it's not bulky. Most of the time you are gonna stitch vertically when you do these padding stitches. You could also do it horizontally if your piece is like this, you would wanna you know, stitch your stitches horizontally like that, but just as long as you're going the opposite direction of what you're actually stitching, that's really all you need to do. And so I'm gonna go in this hole right here next to the bottom. So you wanna leave like just that little bit of space as you can see like where my little thing is drawn. So that's what we're gonna go over. We're not gonna go again in the same holes that our diagonal thread is gonna go. We wanna leave a hole there. So then we can go back down here. And the great thing about padding stitches too is that you don't necessarily um, have to start your needle back down here. You can, if you want, that's totally fine. But if you're trying to conserve thread with these long stitches, you could go back that way too. But you're just gonna start here and fill in the rest of this shape. Now this one, I'm just gonna do one single layer of padding and so that's it, that's all we need to do. Now you can pad as much as you want. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you pad two or three times. Three times is probably my favorite, um, but it really just depends on the piece and what exactly you're doing. So the only difference here is that you do the exact same thing you did the first time. And you go over each step, I'm sorry, each row once. And then you go back and just go over those exact same stitches a second time. And finally, for this last one, we're doing the exact same thing. We're just going over it three times. And if you wanna do each stitch three times, that's fine too, just like I'm doing here. You don't have to do all of them and then go back over. You can do it any way you like. So once all of your padding stitches are completed, the next step is to go back over and do your satin um, diagonal stitch. Now this part of the process always looks best in a flatter sort of ribbon fiber. I'm using ribbon floss, you can use neon rays, straw silk, fireworks, anything like that. Really you can do this with any fiber you want, but I think it looks best when it's sort of this like flatter fiber. So really all you do is you just satin stitch it like normal, just making sure you're going over those padded stitches. So start from one end and go to the next. 
You can use a laying tool if you like. I just tend to use my needle. Um, and really, you can see on the one that only has one layer of padding, it's, it's easier because you can still see your, um, your stitches and where you're going as opposed to the one that has the three layers of padding. It's a little bit more difficult um, just because the thread is a little bit bulkier. So I wanna speed this up a little bit and then show you um, some tips when we get to the third one. Okay, so I finished going over the ones that have been padded once and twice, and I'm starting to go over the ones that have been padded three times, and the process is the same. But as I mentioned earlier, it might be a little bit more difficult when things are extra padded to see where you need to go. So if you need to, you can always kind of pull the threads over with your needle, kind of like so, just to make sure you're in the right hole and then going down over the right hole as well. So like I said, just take it a little bit more care to make sure you're going in the right places. But as you do, this will start to kind of pull together and make it a little bit easier for you as well. And finally here, I'm gonna go over the pipe cleaner. The process is the exact same um, it's just that diagonal satin stitch. And again, I am not using a laying tool, but that might help you out a little bit. Um, occasionally, the little fuzzy threads of the pipe cleaner um, can show through. I have heard a tip that if um, you cover the pipe cleaner in saran wrap and then tack it down, you won't have that problem. I've actually never done that, but um, you can. I've also just gone over it more than once. So you can do that as well. So I'll go ahead and finish stitching this one up. So I've gone over the one with the pipe cleaner on it twice, and you can still see a couple of little hairs of the pipe cleaner. So I'm just gonna go in here and snip these off. And like I said, you can also um, cover the pipe cleaner in saran wrap and you won't have this issue at all. So all the sections have been stitched and you can see the difference between um, the different layers of padding. So. You can kind of tell the differences in the dimensions when I hold it like that. Um, as you can see, the one with one layer of padding is not, doesn't look that terribly different from the zero, but they get progressively, obviously, thicker and more pillowy as you go along, with that pipe cleaner one being the most um, dimensional. As I said, I did not use a laying tool at all when I did this, and really, the more you pad, the kind of less you need to use one, because the thread, there's more, surface area for that thread to lay over nicely. Um, obviously, if I had this would have looked a little bit better, but as you can see, this is how it's gonna look um, if you do some padding. And as I said in the beginning of the video, I tend to like the number three padding the best. It really stands out, but it all just depends on what you're doing. For instance, one time I did a roof that was supposed to look like jelly beans and I only padded it one time. So play around with it, see how many layers you like the best, but hopefully this made it a little bit easier for you.